Hello everybody, this is Michael, and welcome to The Realms Remembered, in which I am going to attempt to do a reread and reviews of the entire Forgotten Realms fiction line. Uh, this is a, a giant undertaking, hampered by my inability to read quickly, and the demon though that last is obviously a lie. So let's see, let's get started. Uh, I'm using a, a site that I'll, I'll mention in the comments to uh, go by what fits to what year, and uh, we're just going to be kind of going uh, along in order as best we can here. Um, sometimes things will overlap, obviously, and uh, you might think the order is a little weird or whatever, and uh, sometimes it'll owe to what I happen to be able to get from the library, what interests me more, so on and so forth. Uh, most of the stuff we're going to talk about today I'm not even really going to have a full review for because it's uh, a lot of stuff that I'll admit I'm, uh, I'm skipping for the most part, but let's talk about it anyway because I'm not going to actually read every single book if I dislike them. Feel free to disagree, feel free to comment, feel free to, if you want, submit alternate reviews in response to this to the stuff that I didn't happen to like. If you like it for whatever reason you want to defend it, go for it. I uh, I would love for this to be more discussion and less of me just talking in the dark. And hey, if you want to join along and read with me, you can easily go to the website that I'm going to list and uh, check out what's coming up next. Let me know, and uh, hell, we can Skype together on this for the next one or something if you want. So, let's see, there are in the uh, Realms Anthologies, we're going to start there, a lot of the realms anthologies have stories that take place way, way long ago. Uh, the earliest that we have here is a negative 25,090 by Dale Reckoning in the realms of the elves. That's Traitors by Richard Lee Byers. This will probably come up a lot since Byers is so damn prolific, but so far I have not read anything by him that I enjoyed. So, uh, that's a problem. Um, yeah, didn't really do much for me. Didn't care about it. Most of the stories I won't go into, but since this is the one that kind of starts everything off, I just remember somebody went into a room and, like, it took two and a half pages and I was bored. Uh, let's see. Then we had uh, negative 700. We had the Netheril Trilogy by Clayton Emery, who, for the most part, I really enjoy his writing, and I was all excited about the uh, Netheril Trilogy because I find Netheril really interesting and intriguing, but, like, I got halfway through uh, Swordplay, the first one, and it was like, it, it cuts between two different plot lines, and it was like wizards bickering and a barbarian beating the crap out of things. And I just could not get into it. I mean, I, it was really frustrating, because I would love to have something in the Netheral Age that was exciting and enjoyable and uh, not not that story, really. Um, I even picked up book three, because it sounds like it kind of separates from what the first two books were doing and tried to read it, but uh, it was just a lot of kind of lovingly crafted talk of the uh, lead barbarian's hair and um, didn't really go anywhere for me. So, you know, if you're into that sort of thing, it's out there. All right, after that, we go to Realms of the Dragons. Um, nothing in there that I read really did anything for me, and I'll keep going back to the uh, at least the newer um, anthologies here and there. Uh, probably trying stuff out, but, like, just, yeah, nothing there even really did much for me. But... Pretty quickly here, uh, like negative 470, we get into Realms of Shadow, which I gotta single out Realms of Shadow. Uh, I've read the first three stories out of what, like 7, 10 or so, and uh, so far they have all been just awesome. Jess LeBeau's the second one is a little, I, it, like it's not amazing, but just the basic plot idea. The pitch is like an assassin goes to try to take out a, 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 a shade mage, uh, or a, uh, what's the term? I, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but um, a, a shade guy. And uh, and that's just a great pitch for a story. I mean, it, it kind of weakens some in the end, but it was it was a fun story. And the uh, first one by Lisa Smedman is just heartbreaking. And uh, the third one by Paul S. Kemp is like everything you would want out of a uh, shade story, out of a, a pre all that weird crap where the cities fell, pre that story uh, that is just really really good. Um, and it has a fight with a dragon in it. Um, so, can't beat that, right? So, next is... And this is kind of just scattered throughout everything else that we're talking about. So, I'll go ahead and get talking about this novel out of the way here. Starting at around negative 400, uh, we go to the prologue of Cormier, a novel by Ed Greenwood. And, um, again, another thing that's going to come up a lot, um, and I'll try not to harp on it, but it's the fact that I cannot stand Ed Greenwood's writing. Um, he seems like a nice guy, and he seems 
you know, obviously he created the realms and he's uh, pretty passionate about it. So go ahead. But um, oh man, can I not stand his writing? I'll, I'll get into details in a minute. But Cormier, I tried a long while ago because I always saw it sitting on the shelves and I thought, ooh, that sounds exciting. Like I mean, not exciting in that woo sort of way because it's the history of a city. Woo. But uh, I thought, oh, this will be good for like politics and things like that. Like. Uh, that's something that I would really love to see in the realms, like um, almost like an Articles of the Federation from Star Trek sort of take on things. But instead, it's really dull. Uh, it 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 goes between again. It's it's two separate stories that are of course somewhat interlinked. But it, it's like half of the book is the history of Cormier, which gets ridiculously repetitive. It's kind of like there were dragons here for a while. And then the new people came, who were the elves, and then and they were like, oh, these stupid new people, whatever, we'll just eradicate them. And then, of course, the elves take them out, because they're trickier and more insightful than they gave them credit for, and blah, 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 blah. Well, 400 years later or whatever, the elves are all taken over, and then the humans come in, and, oh, we don't care about them because they're stupid, and blah, 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 blah. And they end up being trickier. But it's, just, it's the same story repeated over and over and over again, and it's really not interesting. Um... And then the present day stuff is, I just find Cormier ridiculously dull. Um, all of the uh, courtly crap going on, and uh, you know the the mage or vizier or whatever he is, and his machinations, and it's just not. I, I guess my problem is, it's less political and more bickering, which is possibly more realistic. I don't really know, but um, it just doesn't work for me. It's not interesting. It doesn't suck me in. So. Uh, yeah, didn't care for Cormier. Uh, 212, Dale Reckoning Calendar. We start Elminster Making of a Mage, which, as you might have guessed, I did not care for, but I gave it a shot because, you know, come on, Elminster, right? Uh, gave it a shot and just could not get into it. There's a scene very early on where Elminster, a young Elminster, is grabbed by a dragon, and Greenwood, like, he uses the phrase as Elminster is being carried by this dragon, squirming with fear, deep were the dragon's eyes and it just it was like really passive voice right here like it just totally threw me out of the action and made it difficult to focus on it so um did not work for me uh also skipped elminster and mithdranor as, as interesting as i find mithdranor it seemed like this was mithdranor back before it was cool this was like when it was just annoying elves flitting about so didn't even try that and uh temptation of elminster also didn't uh go for that. I figure I'll, I'll pick up an Elminster book again at some point, but not those. Um, 1217 we had the Council of Blades, which I don't even know what that is, so um, obviously the library doesn't have it, and I don't have it, but uh, that may be awesome. Again, if there's anything you disagree with, or that I skip over, that you're like, oh, but that's my favorite book, feel free to comment, uh, leave a video response, something like that. Chime in here and uh, uh, make this a, a discussion, more than just me babbling in the dark. Last one that we'll cover today, which I just finished uh, tonight, um, and I'll admit I skimmed mostly because it didn't really grip me, and uh, this will tie into something that I'll probably come back to a lot, and I'll try not to uh, inundate you here as much, but uh, 1297 is when Homeland begins, the first of the Legend of Driz, not the first that was actually written, of course, um, that was book four of the uh, Legend, but we're trying to do this in chronological order. So, here's my problem. I hate, hate Minzabazarazam Azamazarazam, the city that Drizzt is from, of course, and uh, the, the great drow city that pops up quite often in Realms Fiction, many times later. Here's, here's my problem. Again, it's not politics, it's just people acting like 12-year-olds, and it gets really old, and um, I just can't buy that a city full of these, like, uh, essentially stupid bitches, stupid spiteful bitches, could last as long as it supposedly had. It, it, it just it should have fallen in on itself long, long ago, but for some reason it just keeps going. And and what the book showed me, because essentially, I mean, here's the plot of the book. Drizzt is born. Drizzt is just from birth, essentially, a normal person trapped in a drow's body in the Underdark, you know, being trained to, like, kill things. But, like, because he's really awesome... Um, you know, because he's essentially like the most Mary Sue, Mary Sue character ever. Um, nobody wants to kill him because he's like, well, it's like, well, he's so awesome. He will bring honor to our family, even though he has the morals of an upsider, an outworld or whatever the hell they call him. And so there are two things that are kind of proved with this. First of all, Drizzt isn't necessarily as like one in a million as you might think, because we get to see another character, um, who, uh, 
has kind of similar doubts as him about Drow society. However, this other character decides to take care of those doubts in a different way. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, and the other thing is, it's like, Drist was essentially meant to die when he was born. They didn't do it. So, of course, it's kind of like, there's a reason they didn't do it. It's not just like, oh, we must protect our child, because they don't give a shit. But uh, they don't do it, and that proves to be a bad idea in the long run. And then later, essentially, they realize, like, oh, Drist is, uh, you know, he has morals, and they kind of, like, make the offhand comment, whenever this happens with others, we kill them. So it's like, oh, okay, this does happen every now and then, but the drow have a way of dealing with it, because essentially every time Drizzt brings up a normal view on morality, like you or I as normal humans might have, the other drows just get bitchy and defensive, because of course they don't have any defense for acting like spiteful bitches all the time, just that they're spiteful bitches. So it just it, it gets tiresome, because... They, they just aren't presented as a realistic society. They're kind of like the Ferengi on Star Trek, if you will. Um, it, it's like, it's kind of cute here and there, but how, and, and like, as a as a play on capitalism or whatever, it's it's nice in the background, but then when you start looking at them more in-depthly, you're like, wait, this this society doesn't actually fit together. This There are a lot of jagged pieces that don't work right. So, anyway, obviously tons of people love Drizzt. So if you want to come to his defense, feel free to pop in. I, uh, I don't mind dissenting opinions, but please be ready to defend those positions. All right, that's all for now. I will be back next time with lots of exciting stuff, including Pool of Radiance, I hope, um, and uh, more Drizzt, because he's kind of <laughs> all over the sucker from here on, on out. This is Michael T. Bradley, and this has been Realms Remembered, Episode 1. Thanks for joining me. Bye.